So uh, today um, we're going to have probably a, a shorter session than usual. Uh, I want to finish the classification and then uh, next time we, we start with well pairing. You will see that basically um, after today, we, we did all the preparations for weight pairing, and it's not going to be a, a very long to uh, uh, to finish the weight pairing. Um, but nevertheless, I think it it uh, it deserves a, a, a fresh start. So uh, so today we're just going to. Uh, tie the loose ends. And I remind you what we proved last time. Um, the divisor of gm minus gn and this is for um, m bigger than n uh, m n m plus n and m minus n prime to the characteristic Um, the divisor of of this uh, GM minus GN is um, the divisor generated by all the M plus N torsion points plus the divisor generated by all the M minus N torsion points. Um, minus two, the divisor generated by the M torsion points. Minus two, the divisor generated by N torsion. And if there is an immediate corollary, so um, taking uh, degrees of uh, uh, these divisors, we get uh, uh, the corollary that uh, I mean, on the left-hand side, the divisor of GM minus GN is a principal divisor. So we 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 know that the degree is zero. Um, and if I denote uh, DK to be the number <coughs> of K torsion points, Um, then I know that d m plus n, this is the, the degree of this divisor. The degree of this, I mean, this divisor e m plus n is generated by uh, it's it's this divisor, just to, to illustrate, is simply the sum of all points with coefficient one, where the points run over all E M plus N. So taking the degree is simply summing um, once, uh, how many times? The, the number of times, uh, the, the number of points in E M plus N. So this is dm plus n, and then we have dm minus n. 
minus 2 dm minus 2 dn. Okay, is this is this clear? And we have it for any for any m bigger than n. Now, um, this kind of uh, thing is is our uh, what is called a recurrence relation, but it's a uh, it's a bit. Uh, it, in an unusual form because we have a, a two indices instead of one. Um, so the current relation. Uh, the, the typical example to keep in mind is the Fibonacci. The Fibonacci sequence is um, a n plus two is equal to a n plus one plus a n, and um, we have a, a starting conditions a um, a one is equal to one, and a two is also equal to one. You see. Um, in a recurrence relation, like this Fibonacci sequence, if um, if I have a, if I if the recurrence relation, uh, like if the recurse, uh, recursive relation of the sequence is uh, two steps, then in order to determine a solution, I need um, I need to know the first first two elements. But if the recurrence relation would be um, three steps, then then I would need uh, three initial elements to determine a solution for the sequence. If, if it exists sometime, there is no solution. And as we will see, there is a, there is a way to, to solve uh, recurrence relations uh, quite generally, but but first I, I want to say I mean in this uh, corollary star uh, we have something a bit different than uh, than the the Fibonacci sequence relation because we have m and n, but it's not a problem. I, I can simply take um in star take n equals one um note that d one which is simply the number of points in e one E1 is, is simply the collection of all points in E over K bar such that such that 1 times P is equal to O. But 1 times P equal to O means, means P equal to O. So there is only Um, there is only one point. Okay, so D1 is equal to 1. Um, and we get uh, the recurrence relation, which I will call uh, Rm, which is uh, d m plus one plus 
dm minus 1 minus 2dn minus 2 e equal to 0. So you see the diff. So so now we are in the form that is similar to the Fibonacci sequence, but the the difference is that we have a free coefficient. So this this is a, a, this is called a homogeneous um, a relation. And this is called, uh, I, I think, in or not non non homogeneous uh, and recurrence relation. But um, we can reduce. So okay. So so what is what is a solution to a recurrence relation? A solution uh, to uh, a recurrence relation. is a sequence a m a m let's say m bigger than one which is just to say uh, um it's like a infinite uh, ordered tuple so a1 a2 uh, and so on up to a n i a m a n uh, continues indefinitely um so so a solution is a sequence such that for any um well to let's say to to rm um is a, an infinite sequence such that for any m a m plus one plus a m minus one minus two a m minus two is equal to zero. One solution is a m equals m squared. This is very easy to, to check because uh, well, you can even check it uh, on the on the original uh, uh, relation star that has m m and n because if you put a, m m, I mean, you put a k square d k equals k square as a, a uh, as a sequence, then you get m plus n square plus m minus n square minus 2m square minus 2n square. And this is indeed equal to zero. This is a, a very easy a, a, a algebraic uh, identity. So we we want to show that um, uh, 
um, a m bigger than one equals m square. is a unique solution to um, either to star or um, it's equivalent to say that it's a unique solution to, um, to RM. Right, because... Yes, go on. When you say unique, you mean like the only solution? Yeah, unique is, is the only the only okay, one. Thanks. Yes. Um, because if we know that this is a unique solution, I mean, look, if, if I know that there is a unique solution to RM, then obviously there would be a unique solution to star to the, the orange one right because the the orange one i can it's it's supposed to be valid for any m and n i mean for any m bigger than n so i can always take n equals one and I, then i would i would uh, fall back to to the green uh, relation so if, if i know that there is a unique solution to the green relation then i immediately can conclude that there is a unique solution to the orange relation do, do you see this i'm not sure because like the green relation is when you fix n to be one yes so okay i mean i i, I agree with the the, the, the green solid that Okay, you can show that the. I mean, the I'm saying way. like uh -huh. it's just like a, this is in math, it's called a, re a reduction. I mean, if I show that there is a unique solution to the green relation, it would automatically follow that there is a unique solution to the orange relation. Right? Okay, okay, but that doesn't. Okay, but not, but, will, but not not be, will not be the same. Okay. But not vice versa. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, I was a bit uh, um, inaccurate. Uh, so we want to show that this is there is a unique solution to to star, um, and it is enough to show that. Um, a m equals m square is a unique solution to a, a r m r m i remind you is is this um uh, d m plus one plus dm minus one minus two dm minus two equals to zero. Okay, so this, uh, is this okay or no? Yes, I think that now it makes more sense. Thank you very much, yeah. Yeah, okay, so we did a reduction. We. Uh, uh, it's enough for us to show that there is a unique solution to this uh, uh, non-homogeneous uh, uh, recurrence relation. But in fact, um, so we know one solution, um, and uh, if... <clears throat> If um, Bn, Bn is another solution, to this relation, 
RM. I guess I can I can just take uh, take out the the, uh, the index m because this this relation means that it's for uh, for every m for every positive integer m. Um, then so so if b m is another solution to the relation r. Then I can take the sequence. Uh, let's call it CM, or maybe H, HM, um, HM is, is the sequence of the difference between the two sequences. So I take, it's like, formally I just write this, But what it really means, I mean, what is the difference of two infinite sequences? You take the difference in every spot. Okay, so uh, if a, a, a n and b n are two solutions to the relation R, then their difference is going to be a solution to um let me call it r h um it's another recurrence relation but um in this case it's a homogeneous recurrence relation Now to see why, why if why would H M be a solution to um, to this uh, uh, recurrence relation? Um, I, I mean, I I know that A M plus one. That basically for all n, A M plus one plus a m minus one minus two d sorry two a m is equal to zero this is because a m is a solution to the recurrence relation r and i also know that b m plus one plus b m minus one sorry i should have uh, um minus two right that's the the true relation and this is a minus two b m minus two is equal to zero right that's uh, um i mean if if i know that a and b are sequences that solve the relation r then i have these two equations but then i can subtract the equations and i get a m plus one minus b m plus one plus a m minus one minus b m minus one minus two a m minus b m uh, and that's it equals equals zero because the the free coefficient vanishes or cancels out so so you see uh, um, that uh, um, hm equals a n minus b m is a, a solution to r h the the homogeneous 
a recurrence relation that is derived from the original uh, non-homogeneous relation. Is this clear now? Yes, thank you. I, I just have one question regarding notation. This H, like a kind of powering R. Say again? This is, so I have a question regarding notation. This R uh, with the H like on top. Yes. H how do you read this, like in, in, like in, in, in language? Uh, yeah, um, you can say R to the H. But it's not okay. the same age. It's not the um, here. This age M is like age one, age two, and so on. Um, sequence, sequence, yes. It's like a sequence of uh, of integers, and uh -huh. here the the age is is just like a, a, the first letter of uh, of the word uh, homogeneous. Ah, okay, okay. That's Thank that's you. the real. I mean, that's that's my uh, kind of uh, 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 workflow for uh, for notations. Okay, cool. Okay. Thanks. Um, and okay, so so uh, uh, let's do another reduction. It, it is enough to show that um, zero is the unique solution To, um, to our age. Because then uh, uh, if I have uh, two solutions to the original relation R, then their difference is a solution to, to our age. And if we know that zero is the only solution to our age, then I know that their difference is is, uh, is the zero sequence, which means that they, as sequences, they are equal. Uh, or in other words, for any M, a M is equal to B M. Okay, is this reduction uh, clear? Okay, so how do we show that? We want, I, I claim that uh, uh, our age has a, has a unique solution. I mean, clearly the, the sequence uh, zero, zero, zero all, all the way is, is a solution to our age. Uh, and how do I show that it is, uh, it is unique? So, our age, which is this um, dm plus one, uh, let me just write it slightly differently. Um, minus 2dm plus dm minus 1 equals to 0. Uh, uh, we associate what is called the characteristic polynomial and the characteristic polynomial 
you can, uh, I mean, basically it's a, a lambda square minus two lambda plus a one. You yeah, yeah, yeah. one. Yeah. Hello? Uh, quack? Quack? Uh, um, I'm going to remove you from the call if, uh, if you don't speak up, Quack. Um, can can you speak up? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, what brought you here? You you were never uh, in our session, as far as I remember. Uh, I'm from uh, Orange Network. But uh, uh, why did you join here? uh to learn um okay so i i don't think you can uh, you can catch up with uh, with what we're doing we are pretty uh, uh, pretty advanced um but uh, 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 what do you think you you want to stay yeah yeah i want to stay i want to learn more about ZKP. Yes, Sorry, but well. this is the. I think you are um, you are too late. It's like we have uh, done lectures for a, a more than a year now, and you haven't been in any of almost any of them. So I don't see how you can um, you can fit. Uh. Okay, so I suggest, uh, let me just give you a link uh, and you can uh, you can read about it. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. Okay, um, anyway, uh, let's continue. Uh, so I, I associate the polynomial lambda square minus two lambda plus one equals zero. Um, and it, of course, this is, a, this is the same as saying that a, a lambda minus one square is equal to zero. So we know we know the the roots of this polynomial. There is one root, namely uh, lambda equals one, and it's a it's a repeated root or a, a root of multiplicity two. Now. Consider. the set of all sequences um, let's call this set V V equals to the set of all sequences a m m bigger than one such that the a m's are real numbers for all m. The set V
is a vector space. Uh, under the, the following two operations, um, I, I mean, if, if I tell you that something is a vector space, I need to tell you how to add two vectors and how to uh, multiply a vector by scalar. So um, if I want to, to do AM plus BM, then uh, this is this is simply uh, uh, adding the 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 m entry of the first sequence to the m entry of the second sequence in each entry and if i want to multiply by a scalar so if alpha is a uh, a real number alpha multiplied by the sequence am is simply the sequence in which i multiply every entry of the original sequence by alpha and um and you it's it's very easy to check if the the, the usual axioms of a vector space are uh, satisfied what is the zero vector can anybody say the zero second sequence yeah the zero sequence and what is the the uh, additive inverse of uh, of a vector I mean, just what? negating each element of the sequence. Say again. Uh, negating each element of the sequence. Yes, exactly. OK, so it's very easy. And now on this sequence, uh, sorry, on this, uh, uh, so th this is a, a um, an example of of a v, so v over r is an infinite dimensional vector space okay um, and it's an interesting vector space for us because we we want to to look at sequences. Um, and define a function. Yes. Uh, can you like comment a bit maybe with example or something what what it will be like infinite dimensional vector space? Um let's just say do you know you know what is a basis for a, a vector space? Honestly, I don't remember anything about vector spaces. Okay, so uh, so for, forget about this remark. You can you can look it up uh, later. Um, okay, but it, it just says that uh, you you cannot express um, uh, all the vectors in V as a, a linear combination of some finite set. Mm, so, I got it. I got it. Okay. Yes. Um, so now I define, um, um, let's call it big lambda, which is a function from V to V. And this function simply takes a sequence, AM, and shifts it by by one so it gives me the sequence a m plus one where m uh, is bigger than one so eg if i take the fibonacci sequence one one two three four five 
three, five, and so on. And I apply lambda on this Fibonacci sequence, I get the sequence one, two, three, five, and so on. Okay? And I claim So from I didn't call the 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 characteristic polynomial by a name. Um, let's call it f lambda. And f lambda is is uh, f lambda is this lambda minus one squared. But I will use this um, this description, and now imagine that in f lambda instead of lambda, I substitute the the linear uh, operation big lambda. I mean I, I didn't say it, but. Um, Big lambda from V to V is a linear map. I mean, it's very easy to see that if you you add two sequences, and if you do big lambda of AM plus BM, then this is exactly the same as big lambda of AM plus big lambda of BM. And also, if you multiply by a scalar, so if I do alpha times, if I do uh, la big lambda of alpha times a sequence a m then it's the same as doing alpha times lambda of a sequence okay so so it's a linear opera uh, operator um and I can I can substitute inst instead I mean in the characteristic polynomial f I can substitute a, a big lambda instead of small lambda. So consider f of big lambda. F of big lambda I need to make sense of what is lambda square. So lambda square, I'm going to do lambda composed with lambda. Um, and then I have two small lambda in F, then I just write two big lambda. And finally, I have, I have to add one, but one is, um, is equivalent, I mean, is, is analogous to the identity map on, on V. So I write identity of V. This is a, 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 as a, a map from V to V. You see, if I have linear maps, I mean, Two lambda is is just a linear map from V to V that takes a sequence two lambda is is a linear map that takes a sequence A M and sends it to um, two times A M plus one 
for m bigger or equal to one. Okay, so obviously if I have a, a linear map and I multiply it by, by some, some element in the, the ground field, then I get another linear map. And if I have two linear maps, like, uh, well, obviously I can do minus. And the identity map on V is also a linear map. And I can take, um, let's say, minus 2 lambda plus identity V. This is another linear map from V to V because, um, I mean, if you want to see what it does to a sequence, this is going to be a minus 2a m plus 1 plus a m. Uh, which is just to say uh, um, the sequence minus 2 a m plus 1 plus a m. It's, I can put it as one sequence. And now if you want to do lambda compose with lambda as a linear map, then it's very easy. It's like uh, you take a sequence and you shift it not by one, but by two, two places. So this is A M plus two um, M bigger than one. And all in all, If I do f of big lambda, which I just defined it as um, lambda composed lambda minus 2 lambda plus the identity, and I apply f of lambda on a sequence a m then what do i get I, I, I get the sequence a m plus two minus two a m plus one plus a m And this is exactly the relation you see. You see now the the reason that we we introduce this uh, um, polynomial. I mean the relation R um, R H that we have is exactly this. It's like uh, uh, d m plus one minus two d m plus. Uh, or yeah, plus a uh, dm minus one. So um, in our case, okay. And um, I'll just write it here. Our age is um, d. I write it uh, like this, dm plus two. Um, minus two d m uh, plus one plus uh, d m. 
Okay, this is just a, a rewriting of um, um, of the relation RH. I just uh, shifted RH by uh, by one. Is this clear uh, now, Lisa? Yeah, all good. Okay, so what I'm saying thus the solutions to our age are precisely the kernel of this linear map f lambda The kernel, I remind you, it's the set of all sequences, A, M, such that F lambda of A, M is equal to zero. To zero, I mean the zero sequence. Okay, so now we have, we have translated the the question about a, a solution of a, a, a homogeneous a, a linear a, a recurrence relation into a question of a, a linear algebra finding a, a, the kernel a, of some a, some up now obviously kernel of of any any linear map, I mean f of lambda is a linear map from v to v. So kernel f of lambda is some linear subspace of v. So it is it is a linear uh, it is a vector space in its own right. I mean, you can add if you have two uh, two elements in the kernel, you add them up, you you get another element in the kernel. If you multiply an element in the kernel by a scalar, you get another uh, element in the kernel, which is equivalent to say that if I have a solution to R age and I multiply the solution by some scalar, alpha, then I get another solution to, to our age. And if I add two solutions, I get another solution. Uh, and I claim that the kernel of F lambda is in fact a finite dimensional vector space. Observe. Uh, the map, let's call it um, I from kernel F of lambda to R square. Um, given by I, I stands for initial. I take, I take a sequence A M that I, it, it's in the kernel. So it is a, it is a solution to R age. Um, and I map the sequence I need to, to give you two a pair of elements, I mean, in R square. So I just give you the two initial elements of the sequence. Um, this map is, well, first linear. This is a, a map between a, a linear vector spaces. Uh, it's it's again very easy to see because uh, I of 
AM plus BM, if AM and BM are two solutions, this is just AM, A1, A2, sorry, this is just A1 plus B1, A2 plus B2, which is a, a, by definition, a I of AM plus I of BM. And this map is a, a bijective because a, a, any solution, I mean, any a, a solution a n to r h is completely determined by the first two elements a1 and a2 and if you give me just a, a, a two initial initial elements a1 and a2 i can cook up a solution there is a unique solution that i uh, that i can cook up from the the initial elements a1 and a2 what do i do i look at the relation r age i put here a, 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 a1 and a2 I mean, whatever values you give me. And then I just uh, uh, recursively figure out what is A3, what is A4, and so on. There is a unique way to do it. So this map is, is a, linear, a, a linear map between vector spaces, which is bijective. So it is an isomorphism of vector spaces. the a, a kernel of f of lambda is isomorphic as vector spaces as a vector space a vector space over r to r square okay so we started with an infinite dimensional vector space th that was v the space of all possible sequences of real numbers and we um, we focused our attention to the space of sequences that are actual solutions to uh, uh, our homogeneous equation, our uh, uh, homogeneous uh, recurrence relation. And this turned out to be a finite dimensional vector space. Um, any questions? Up to here. Maybe my only question is that uh, last session we stopped at case two uh, of the theorem or the proof of the theorem. Ah, uh, uh. and this time we flow to something very different. No, okay. I I thought that I I don't think that we I thought that we finished no I I, I think that we finished all the cases uh, last time oh no my bad my bad my bad my bad my bad we finished I forgot yeah <laughs> I I, uh, I remember we finished so we had I mean the starting point is this uh, the the theorem about the the divisor of the uh, GM minus GM yeah. But uh, uh, you're okay with all this, uh, uh, all this stuff about the, the relations? Uh, in, in general, yes. Maybe if you can repeat like the very high level logic that we had that uh, theorem about the visors, and then we had a corollary. Um, and we wanted to arrive to this like last corollary that a uh, kernel is isomorphic to R square, right? This was the end goal. 
this would be i mean we we aim to to show that our a so we we want to show that our age has a, a, a unique solution which is zero if if we know that then we can uh, uh, work out backwards uh, into a, a corollary that says that the original recurrence relation has a unique solution because yes okay yes right uh, so we we now uh, um, concluded that uh, uh, the space of all the ve the vector space of all possible solutions to the the homogeneous recurrence relation R H. Um, here, our age is a two-dimensional vector space. So we will soon soon see that uh, this this vector space uh, 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 characterization is very helpful. But is this clear, uh, Arnau? Yes. You are able to follow the the whole thing. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm surprised because the last time, uh, previous week, when you started to go into the sequence and stuff, I was uh, like not following pretty much, but today things look very clear, so I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Then um, let's take a break and uh, we come back to uh, to finish this, uh, this linear algebra argument and then... Uh, uh, finish the whole thing maybe if we wanted to make it shorter uh, maybe we can do without a break if it works um, I, I'm not sure it's going to be shorter eventually I think it's going to be it, it will take us a while because uh, after this linear algebra argument we then need to do a, a an argument about a, a, with the classification of the finite abelian groups so let, let's take a break. I think eventually we we will end up with a, a almost normal uh, time session. I feel like I will need to leave in half an hour because you told me to be shorter and I put a working meeting on that. Ah, time. okay. So I'm sorry for that. Uh, okay, okay. So then, uh, are now you okay with the, that we continue? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay. So. <clears throat> Um, what does it mean that uh, uh, something has a, a, a something is a two-dimensional vector space? Um, it means that you can express any vector in the space. As, as a linear combination of uh, of two basis vector. Um, so le let's consider the following lemma. Let C1, um, C2 be V numbers. Uh, and suppose the polynomial lambda square minus c1 lambda minus c2 is equal to zero um, has only one root let's call this root r a sequence um a m is a solution to the recurrence relation um a a a n a a a n minus C1 A and minus one 
minus C two A N minus T equals zero. If and only if there are constants alpha one and alpha two such that a n or a m is of the form alpha one r to the m plus alpha two m r to the m for all m In other words, I'm saying that the vectors, I mean, the, the sequences of a, a R to the M and M R to the M are two basis vectors of a, a, a kernel of F of lambda. You see, I mean, if I say that every every solution to this relation is some kind of linear combinations, uh, alpha one plus alpha two, I mean alpha one times some vector plus alpha two uh, times some other vector. I mean I'm just saying here you can you can rewrite it as saying that the sequence a m is equal to alpha one times the sequence r to the n plus alpha two times the sequence m r to the n. So I'm saying that these two vectors are a basis for the space of all solutions for the uh, recurrence relation here. Uh, and I suggest that uh, uh, you just read about the, the, the proof of the lemma uh, in the notes. It's, um, it's like a, a very easy high school level uh, algebra, uh, algebra manipulation. Okay? So you see the corollary from the lemma is that um, for the relation R H uh, that that is a uh, let's write it like this D M plus two or sorry the m uh, minus two the m minus one uh, plus the m minus two equals zero now i i just shifted it uh, uh, um, so that it would fit to the uh, the green box in the lemma so for the relation here with characteristic polynomial, I look at the characteristic polynomial, f of lambda, which is just lambda minus one square. R, the only solution to f of lambda is R equals one. So, This is the only root. And hence, uh, all solutions to our age are of the form AM equals um, alpha one times 
times uh, r to the m is always uh, one, so it's it's one plus alpha two um, m r to the m is just m. Is it okay? Uh, now are you following? Okay. Yes. So, Thanks. So now, um, now let um, a a m be the the solution m square to the original. Uh, uh, and BM be solutions to the original relation, the, the non homogeneous relation, um, R. R is uh, BM plus one plus um, the um, minus one uh, minus two DM minus two um, and uh, then um, m square minus bm is equal to um, alpha one plus alpha two m for all m, for every uh, every m bigger than one. Uh, in particular, um, for uh, m equals one, we know that b m has to be equal to one because it's a solution to uh, to the recurrence relation right the, the solution to the recurrence relation has to start i mean we are only interested in solutions to the recurrence relation that's that uh, are compatible with the information we know about torsion points and the information we know about torsion points is that e e1 is equal to one right I mean, the number of points in, in E1 is equal to one. So BM, B, sorry, B1 has to be equal to one. And B2 has to be equal to four. So I get um, one minus one is equal to alpha one plus alpha two. And when I put m equals two, I, I get four minus four equals to alpha one plus two alpha two. Which is, this is a, 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 a at least two equations. I mean, this is two equations that has to be satisfied, but already from these two equations, I can see that uh, uh, alpha one, has to be equal to alpha two. I mean, both both of the alphas. The only solution for this equation is alpha one equals alpha two equals zero, right? Because the first equation uh, uh, means that alpha one has to be equal to minus alpha two. And then you plug it into the second equation, it cannot be 
equal to minus alpha 2 and to minus 2 alpha 2, unless both of them are 0. So we prove that our age has a unique solution, namely 0. I mean, and, and this means that BM, I mean, BM has to be equal to M squared for all M, i.e. the relation R has a unique solution. And the, the corollary for all, from all this is that the, the number of points in E uh, M is simply M squared. We know that the number of points in E M, um, this is D, D M, we know that it has to satisfy some recurrence relation and, and uh, 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 the, the only solution for this recurrence relation is the sequence m square. Is it clear so far? It's okay. And uh, now? Yes. Um, so, and, and this is what we wanted to prove since some sessions ago, right? Like the yeah, the this is the big of, of this we, points is... we, yes, this is a this has been a a, a serious goal for the last uh, few sessions. I mean, uh, uh, how do we how do we count the number of m, m torsion points? We we first had a, a, a lemma that it is finite. And then we analyze the divisor of this GM minus D, uh, GN. And then we got a recurrence relation. And we showed that this recurrence relation has a unique solution. OK? Yeah. Cool. I, I will need to go over like the Alden Olds of these past sessions to, to see how dots connect because i think i feel like okay i've been able to follow each of the steps but uh it will be helpful to just go over like in a high level uh, like the thing that you just described but like following myself but but yeah it, it makes sense i think so thank you so le le let me let me just uh, revise the proof quickly okay i think we we still have time um I i'm saying we have a lemma that says um, this. Maybe this, this part of the difficulty is that I didn't prove the lemma because I thought it, it may take some uh, time we don't have. Um, but I, I was saying um, the lemma says that if you have a, a characteristic polynomial that has only one root, I mean, if you have a, a a, a, a recurrence relation as in green with characteristic polynomial that has only one root. This is exactly our case, right? Then all, all the solutions to the recurrence relation are some linear combination of uh, uh, the geometric sequence, basically. I mean, you can think of this this way. I mean, for this this homogeneous recurrence relation, uh, uh, a typical guess for for a solution is the the geometric sequence uh, r to the m or r r to the n because if you if you substitute r to the n i mean you have r to the n minus c uh, c1 r let me put it in another column you have a, a, a r to the n 
minus C1 R to the N minus one minus C2 R to the N minus two equal to zero. It's the same as saying uh, um, uh, that F of R, I, I just, I just cancel out the uh, R to the N minus two. And this is the same as saying that F of R is, is equal to zero. You see or now? Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, so so intuitively, when I when I have a, 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 recur a homogeneous recurrence uh, relation, the geometric sequence r, I mean r to the m, as a sequence, is a, is always going to be a solution, right? B because of the, what is written in pink. Uh, I mean, if I I take a solution to the characteristic polynomial, and I take powers of this uh, uh, of this uh, 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 root of the characteristic polynomial. I get a sequence that is automatically a solution to the recurrence relation. You you with me? Yes 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 yes. yes. Um, okay maybe and, so, so when I okay yeah. And what this lemma says is that uh, um, you can of course you can also take the the sequence r, uh, r to the m. And multiply it by m. This is also going to be a solution. It's very easy to see that these are uh, um, uh, solutions because you, you multiply it by m. You okay? This you can check, but it's uh, it's mm -hmm. very easy yeah. to see. And the lemma says that the all the all the possible solutions to this recurrence relation have to be a linear combination of these two solutions. Uh, but basically, in order to, to show the dilemma, all we need to show is that these two solutions, uh, Rm and uh, um, M, Rm, are a, a, a linearly independent vectors because we know that the space of solutions has dimension two, right? So uh, uh, it is enough to sh to find some um, some pair of uh, of linearly independent vectors, and via this lemma, oh, okay. Uh, so, so you, you see the point or now it's like this lemma says yes. that, that uh, any solution is, is a linear combination of these two solutions. And from this lemma, I can deduce very easily uh, 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 what happens in our case, because in our case, we have a... Uh, um, we have this uh, R age, which is exactly a relation exactly like in the lemma. It just C, C1 is equal to 2 and uh, C2 is equal to 1, right? Yes. Okay. And so I, I, I can use the corollary of the lemma, the, the uh, corollary of the lemma, um, and I look at the characteristic polynomial of this uh, um, uh, recurrence relation. It has a unique solution, R equals one. So I know that all the solutions to, to R H are of the form alpha one times one plus alpha two times M. I mean, this is like A M equals this uh, alpha one plus alpha two M. For some alpha one, alpha two, that I, ha I have no idea what they are at, at the moment, okay? 
And now I go back to the original problem of finding a solution to the, the recurrence, the, the non-homogeneous recurrence relation. And I know that AM equals M square is one solution to this uh, relation, right? Yes. Okay. And uh, and the, the, the other thing, I mean, so let's say I have another solution, BM. Then I subtract the two solutions m square minus bm and i know that it has to be a solution to the the homogeneous relation r sorry rh right but we we concluded that solutions to the the homogeneous relate relation have to be of the form alpha 1 plus alpha 2m now yes sorry i think i had internet problems but, but yeah I, I think i follow this part um okay so you prove that it's 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 unique because like the difference is yeah so uh, now i, I have I this equation uh, let's call it double star and this equation double star i i i mean i know that b b1 has to be equal to one and B2 has to be equal to 4 because B1 needs to be the number of points of E1. And B2 yeah. needs to be the number of points of E2. So they have to be 1 and 4. It's like I have a recurrence relation and I have two initial conditions. I mean, I have, it's like a, a, a if you give me just the relation of the Fibonacci sequence, there could be many solutions. But if you tell me that the first two elements have to be one and one, then the, I know that there is a unique solution. So anyway, yes. so this B, B1, I know that B1 and B2 have to be equal to, to one and to four. So I plug it in into this equation double star and I get two equations. These two equations, it's very easy to check that, I mean, these, these are two equations in the, the, the unknowns, uh, alpha one and alpha two. But alpha one and alpha two have, um, um, I mean, so alpha one and alpha two have to be zero. The, these are the only solution for, for these two equations. Okay, so so all in all, yes. I get I get that m um, square minus b m needs to be equal to to zero for all m. It needs to be equal to this is the equation uh, double star. If I know that this is zero and this is zero, then m mm -hmm. square minus b m is equal to zero. So, so BM is equal to M square for all M. Okay. Uh, yes. And th th that completes the proof. Th this means that that the only solution to, I mean, the the number of points in EM is M square. And uh, I think it's good to stop now. And we, next time we uh, we do the the final argument. Next time we show that E M is in fact isomorphic as a group to integers modulo M times integers modulo M. Okay. Nice, thanks. Uh, yeah, so I, I will try to go um, back. Uh, I, I mean, so th this, this last part was clear. Thank you very much. I think that I it will be helpful for me to 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 spend some time on trying to connect uh, this last part to the previous 
sessions uh, stuff. Uh, but, but yeah, overall, uh, I have a good feeling on it. I mean, today's session was, was very clear. So, um, okay. so yeah. thank you very much. Yeah, I mean the connection should be fairly easy. I mean the the you see in the start of this uh, session we said we have a theorem about a divisors, a and in particular I can take the degree of mm -hmm. the the divisors. I get some a, a, a relation, this relation, right? Yes. And uh, I know uh, uh, the two initial conditions for the relations. I mean, D1 has to be one and D, D2 has to be four. Yeah. And this condition uh, uh, in, uh, in orange here, it has to be satisfied for all M bigger than N. Um, yes. And, uh, and then, um, in particular, I can substitute if it has to be uh, true for all m uh, bigger than n. Then, in particular, uh, um, I can substitute a n equals one. And then, uh, um, I get a relation d m this this r h. Sorry, r what we call r. I just substitute uh, n equals one. I get dm plus one plus dm minus one minus two dm minus two is equal to zero. You see, that's the relation to, to what, and then I, I start solving. I yeah, mean, yeah, so from, from this point, yeah. Okay, so th this is the this is the connection. I mean, I, I want to, uh, uh, I want to classify, I mean, I want to, to know what are the number of points in EK, and the the, the theorem about the divisors give me a, a a relation between the decays. So now I just solve solve use techniques to solve uh, recurrence relations, and I get that there is a unique solution, a unique sequence DK that uh, uh, satisfy this relation. Uh, I don't know. Triangle. You see, and that's so that's that's yeah, what yeah, we yeah. did today. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now cool. I see that uh, Quok asked for a. Uh, uh, I don't have a a, a, a full link. The, Arnaud, you have the wait. Let me. I, I don't have it, and I'm from a tablet, so I, I cannot uh, find it now. But I think if you go on YouTube and you just search like um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I... like privacy scaling explorations, math seminars, something like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. There will be like a bunch of videos and, and a list. Yeah. Okay, you. Yeah. I see uh, a little here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So um, let's finish today. And um, uh, Quok, uh, I think it's better for you to just watch the videos. There are many of them. And um, I mean, I don't think you can get much from uh, coming to the next sessions, but up to you. So, uh, yeah, that's it for today. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye.